What's good, YouTube? It's me, everybody. Back in the next video. So, with the ban list on the horizon, I actually want to talk about a couple of rogue decks that I think will be viable, assuming the ban list hits and gets Snake Eyes, you know, the other decks kind of out of the way, clearing a path. These decks might actually be somewhat decent. And starting at the top, is Chimera. So this is a deck that I actually played for YCS Vancouver. Didn't do terribly hot with it, but these guys are getting more and more support. Like we recently got the new fusion monster, Burfament, the mythical king of Phantom Beasts, which a lot of people have completely disregarded because by then Chimera had already been power crept. But of course you can do some cool things with this card, including locking your opponent out using Barrier Statue of the Abyss, because what happens is when you summon Burfamet, you foolish a fiend monster from your deck in the form of Barrier Statue. Then because you have the other Chimera in your graveyard, you can then use Chimera's effect to banish itself during your opponent's turn, summon out that dark statue, and effectively lock out your opponent from playing. So really, really cool combo. And you know, potentially assuming there's some branded hits, I don't think that they'll actually hit the deck, but you never know. They might just decide that the deck has been around for too long. They might limit branded fusion or something along the lines. And then it just makes this deck a lot more um, in the spotlight as a premier fusion deck, right? Of course, you can already play these guys with the branded engine and you probably should. But that being said, if they do hit the branded engine, I think these guys will get a lot better. Not to mention, we're actually getting some new support for them in the next set in the form of Nightmare Apprentice. This is a card that says you can special summon it from your hand by discarding one card. Then if it's special summoned, you can actually add an illusion monster from your deck to your hand, therefore increasing consistency even further because now we can search for Mirror Sword Knight or a copy of Cornfield Quado, and of course, this card does not use our normal summon, so that just means that you know the deck gets a lot more consistent. There are a lot of new illusion stuff actually coming out that do a lot of cool things, and I think this is definitely a deck that people should have on the horizon, potentially picking up this deck for now because the core is really, really cheap. And once people realize that this deck has some legs, it'll probably start climbing up again because these cards are you know uh, from a couple of sets ago, and I could definitely see them starting to get bought out. Next is another deck that's getting new support, and it's actually Unchained Slash u -Bell. Why Unchained Slash u -Bell? Well, these guys actually happen to work very well amongst each other because the u -Bell monsters are all fiends, and how this deck works is they establish a lot of fiend extenders and fiend monsters on the table that you can then rank up into Unchained Soul Lord of Yama. From there, you search and go off into your plays. Specifically, this deck is going to be good because you're getting some new support in the next set of two cards, namely Nightmare Throne, which is a field spell that allows you to take a fiend monster with zero attack or defense from your deck and either add it to your hand or destroy it, meaning it's not restricted to Yubao cards. You can actually add some other cool things, including the Dark Beckoning Beasts or the Summoning Beckoning Dude, Dark Beckoning Guy. Yeah, Dark Be Beckoning Beast is his name from your deck. And he also pairs very, very well because you can actually reborn Yubao with the opening of the Spirit Gates. So just really, really cool stuff that you can actually do here. And then of course, we are actually getting another Phoenix Extender in the form of Inferno Grave Squirmer, a card that says if you control a feed monster, a quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then you can destroy one monster you control that's you bell or mentions it. So very, very nice pseudo disruption during your opponent's turn in addition to being an extender. But that doesn't stop there. In the graveyard, this card says you can banish it from your graveyard, special summon one feed monster with zero attack or defense from your hand or your graveyard, except Infernal Grave Scrummer. This guy is actually insane for you bells. And of course, when you combine it with Unchained stuff, I can definitely see this deck being viable. It's already doing some damage in the OCG. So if you guys have access to the Unchained core, I would recommend you picking it up now, as well as the Ubel stuff before players actually catch in on the late hype and realize, wow, these cards are actually somewhat decent and could be a potential rogue contender. Next is another deck that's kind of been doing well at some regionals and that's Vanquish Soul. I think this deck has a very, very powerful matchup against the Tempai Dragons deck just because you can control their monsters and kind of pop them before they go to go to the battle phase and before they start synchro off their plays. So because of that, I think this deck actually has somewhat a decent matchup and it's definitely a premier control deck. If you think about the control decks nowadays, Banker's So actually is one of those decks that actually allows you to do so much and just get like a bunch of advantage, play a bunch of hand traps and play a bunch of good cards like Fanmer as well. So with the tools and the resources that they have, I think this is the type of deck that's definitely going to be around in the metagame as a rogue deck. So I know the cards are waiting to get reprinted, but once they do, they'll probably be a lot more accessible. But for now, I think this deck still is going to be a very, very chase deck uh, after the new ban list, because it's definitely a deck that has some legs that can hold its own right now. And after the ban list, if Snake Eyes actually gets a lot weaker, then definitely I could see this deck doing well at a premier event. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. And next is another fire deck, not the fire deck that you would assume, but Salomon Grades. These guys are obviously the worst of the fire decks currently because of Fire Kings and Snake Eyes just being so good in cohesion with each other. 
But these guys are actually very resilient. We've slowly seen the cards come off the ban list over the past year or so, and now they're basically at full power. So if Snake Eyes actually gets hit to the point where the deck is not as playable, this is the next deck that can take advantage of Promethean Princess. We can just go off into our salad plays, go rank up. We can hard make powerful cards like Salomon Great, um, Raging Phoenix, and take advantage of the search effect. There's so many built-in things that make this deck very, very powerful. You can play all of the cool cyber stuff, the heat souls to draw cards. So I know this deck did certainly somewhat well at some regionals throughout the past season, and I could definitely see this deck being a lot better if the best decks kind of get slaughtered in some way, shape, or form, because right now these guys are really, really kind of susceptible to some hand traps that are in the format, things like Nibiru, and they're overall a little bit weaker than Snake Eyes in terms of pushing and also putting up a board, but if the metagame kind of, the power level dies down a little bit, I can definitely see control decks like this start climbing up again, especially being able to take advantage of Princess. And then the last rogue deck I want to talk to you about is none other than Centurion. For some reason, people have forgotten about Centurion, but these guys are still somewhat decent. And of course, we're getting some new support in the upcoming set as well in the form of Centurion Gargoyle 2, who is another big, huge body that you can special summon out. And he has a lot of cool effects. Uh, you're able to add him back to your hand if you synchro summon him as another piece. You can also special summon him out just like the other Centurions can. They're getting a new uh, quick play spell card as well that's somewhat decent. They're getting a new um, synchro as well. So there are a lot of cool things coming out for these guys and i think the deck definitely has some legs as long as calamity does not actually get the axe which i don't think Konami necessarily will go after this card because they seemingly left it on the table for the past like however many formats ever since this card ebbs and flows in and out of the format as a broken degenerate card but they're probably not going to hit it which means centurion still have what it takes i think as a control deck and a grindy deck to actually be somewhat decent people have forgotten about them but these guys are still somewhat scary you know calamity is nothing to scoff at so yeah, what do you guys think of the decks so far? Are there any other rogue decks that you think will actually be viable? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, subscribe, rate, comment, smash that like button. Um, yeah, I think these decks will be good. We'll wait and see what the ban list is. I'm as excited as you guys are to see when the ban list comes out, hopefully this week, if not next. Other than that, we'll see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye-bye.